Hi, I'm Ping, and welcome to my kitchen. I love to cook, and it's not because it's just my job, but genuinely, I love cooking. I find it really relaxing, and I'm very, very much into getting my kids involved and my family involved when we are actually doing all the cooking. As long as they're here, they're helping out in the kitchen. So we are going to make a pan roasted tomato dal, followed by these flaky roti called roti chennai. This recipe is very unusual in the fact that in Malaysia we eat it for breakfast, but it's so versatile. You can have it any time of the day. It's fun to make and it's absolutely delicious. First thing we're gonna do is we want to cook our lentils. Here we have some lentils which is rinsed a couple of times to get the cloudiness out of it and drained. We're gonna put that in the pan along with water and coconut milk. Now you can use reduced fat coconut milk, but I can tell you now that full fat coconut milk tastes so much better. Give it a stir, turn up your heat, medium high, and we're going to add salt, half a teaspoon of turmeric, and half a teaspoon of chili powder. And give it a mix, and we want to bring it to boil. This will take around 20 minutes, and while we do that, we can prepare our tomatoes. So here I've got a selection of tomatoes. Look how beautiful they are. They're different size, different colors. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to half them. Some with salt, some without salt. It's just so pretty. You know, food, yes, it's all about taste, but it's also all about looks as well. So I like leaving the stalks on. And then half my pan here, some vegetable oil in, the same amount of butter. Butter just gives the roasted tomato such a lovely flavor and the oil just helps the butter not to burn. So you want to drop this in. Try to actually drop them out on the cut side down. It's flat, it will sit in the pan better and then help it caramelize. Now I have a wok here, but you're very welcome to use a frying pan. And then while you're doing that, make sure that you stir your dal once in a while. Don't let it catch. And then we want to add the onions in, some cumin seeds here, salt, and lastly, some fresh curry leaves. I love curry leaves, and it's so great that Waitrose has fresh curry leaves because it's one of the ingredients is quite hard to find. So if you don't have it, you can either omit it or you can actually use dry. If you do find yourself have a pack of curry leaves and you can't finish it, they are perfectly fine to freeze. And don't forget, if you want the recipe, the link is below. Look at these colors. The oil and butter has taken some of the spices. The smell is incredible, and that is done. I like my onions still have got some bite to it. So when we mix it in into the dal, you've got like different texture going on. And the dal has had its time. If you can see, the lentils is broken down and become creamier. And what I'm going to do is pour the pan roasted tomato mixture into the dal. You can obviously serve this separately, but I like the whole thing incorporated in there. And the oil and butter and spices and curry leaves will just enrich the dal further. At this point, you can turn it off and you can heat it up whenever you want it. Dal is quite nice, eaten not so hot. Meantime, we're gonna prepare our roti. Roti chanai. What can I tell you about roti chanai other than it is super delicious and it's super simple to make. It uses very few ingredients, in fact, pantry ingredients, and you can create this flaky, lovely bread that we eat in Malaysia for breakfast. So first we need about 85 ml of water. I'm a type of cook where I kind of guesstimate, but with this roti, you need to make sure that everything is measured out correctly. So the next thing to add is condensed milk. We need about 50 ml of this. It gives sweetness and also certain richness to the bread. Mm. Then we add one egg and about three quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of oil in there as well. And then make sure everything is incorporated. And then we want to weigh out our flour. I'm using bread flour here, but you can use plain flour as well. And then make a well in the middle and you slowly drip the wet ingredients in there. And you can see that the dough is starting to come together. It might seem a little bit sticky at first, but it will soon come together as a dough. You don't want it too wet and you don't want it too dry either. 
If you find this a little bit too dry and you can't get it to stick at all, just add a little bit of liquid in there, just a tiny bit of water. So I would dust a little bit of flour, a light dusting, and using your palm, just give it a good own kneading. And this is a good workout, this. I mean, you can use a stand mixer to do this, but this is my daughter's favourite part. She always say, Mummy, Mummy, can I play with the dough? To them, it's like Play-Doh. And you need about five minutes, as you can see, it's quite soft. The gluten start to form. It gives you a lovely chewy bread. And when I press it, the dough kind of spring back up and that's ready. So at this stage, we want to rest it for about 20 minutes. Roti has always been our go-to for breakfast. My children love it sweet with chocolate spread or coconut curd, but I love it savory. And with one dough, you can have both. So this dough has had 20 minutes. We're going to knead it for another five, and then we're going to cut it into six equal balls. So roll it into a log. Try to make sure that they are quite even, and then we want to cut it into six. Doesn't need to be too precise about this. And then we'll roll it into a tight ball. Cup it with your hands, just like bend them a little bit like that. It's like patting it, little baby. And you kind of like use your hands to form the ball. And then when you're really skilled, you can then do like that, which I can't do, obviously. <laughs> but you can use two hands and you can do two balls at one time. When they're ready, get a container with lid on it because you want to actually secure it. You don't want anything to spill. So with the oil, put a little bit on your hand. Pick up your ball and it's just giving them a little oil rub. Some people use margarine or butter. You can use that if you like. So once you've done that, you then cover the dough balls in oil. Don't worry, you can reuse this oil. Just make sure they are fully submerged and not sticking. It's a little bit like croissant, isn't it? Croissant, you fold it and laminate inside. Whereas with this roti, you cover it in oil and it helps the dough develop into this crispy, flaky layer. And then what we do is to wash our hands and then put the cover on there, secure them and pop them in the fridge overnight. To cook the roti, I normally heat the pan before I do anything. Low to medium heat, let the pan come to temperature. Now, this dough has rested overnight. And what you want to do is use your hands and dip them in the oil and then lift a dough out. See how soft they are? And then you use your oily palm here, press down and then you stretch the dough. The oil allows you to stretch it easily. And the idea is you want to stretch it as thinly as you can. And there's a flipping method, which I'm going to show you. You want this hand the opposite of that one, so you kind of pinch it like that, and then you kind of flip the dough. And then as you flip and move around the dough, you can see how thin the dough is, and that's what we want. Doesn't matter if you have a hole in it, what we want is to stretch it out as thinly as possible, and then kind of fold the edges in like that. And then you kind of lift it up and fold in the middle like that. Trap as much air as possible and then sprinkle the oil on here. You don't want too high a heat. You want it to come up to heat gently. As you can see the bubbles there, that's going to be your flakiness. So I'm so excited about it. Look at that. In Malaysia, when you order roti, they have the dough ready rested. And the uncle, I call him, because everyone's uncle in Malaysia and everyone's auntie in Malaysia. So if you want to order something, you're like, uncle, uncle, can I have something? And he'll make the roti how I like it. Slap it down. Slap it down. Woo! Now, this roti is nice and crispy. And we're going to put this into that. Now, let it rest for a bit. And when you are confident that you can handle the heat, what you want to do is clap it. That's what creates the flaky roti chanai. Rotis are best made fresh like this, but if you have leftover rotis, you can just warm them up in the oven quickly or just put it in the microwave for a very shortest amount of time just to warm them through. So now we can plate up. So we want a little bit of this beautiful dal in here and then we're just going to put this roti. So there you have it. Coconut dal with pan roasted tomatoes and roti chanai. Do have a go because it is so worth it and it's so tasty to eat.